Servos, kia ora, haere mai everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Now, I'm going to talk today a little bit about this omnibus um, proposal, omnibus directive kind of initiative from the EU Commission. Most people who watch this channel already know what the ESRS and the CSRD is, so I don't need to go into too much detail, but for those of you who want to catch up with the news, not that it's that recent, in November last year, the EU Commission made some statements suggesting that they were going to at least streamline and potentially reduce the reporting burden on European companies that was associated with the Green Deal. The particular pieces of legislation that they were looking to adapt to make this happen were the CSRD, the CSDDD and the EU taxonomy. Now, the date for when we are expecting to see something more firm from the Commission is the 26th of February, so put that in your diaries. But in the interim period between November and now, people have been speculating on what changes may actually be proposed formally, and other commentators have obviously been trying to influence the process, influence the political decision in certain directions. I want to explicitly talk about a very narrow part of this, and that is the ESRS itself, the reporting standard. And even then, I want to go even narrower and talk about one specific suggestion or argument that I have seen being made. And the argument is essentially this, that in order to reduce the reporting burden, the Commission must reduce the number of data points that are being asked for or required in the ESRS, in the standard. This suggestion has come up from certain individuals who seem to be arguing that that is what should happen, as well as people simply speculating on what might happen. I think that this argument is simplistic, and I think it is ignorant of the standard itself. And I have two primary arguments for making my case. The first argument is not all of the data points are alike. And therefore, you can't simply trim back the uh, total raw number of data points and assume that the reporting version or the reporting burden will be reduced um, proportionately. The second argument is the stronger one, and that is this suggestion to reduce the data points seems to completely ignore the fact that the standard already contains, right at the very start of the whole reporting process, a step which is designed to do exactly that, to reduce the number of data points which companies must report. So I want to spell out these arguments in a little bit more detail with some examples. We're going to be looking mostly at the IG3 document here. This is the list of data points. So let's get started. So this is IG3. This is a summary spreadsheet of all of the data points that are in the whole standard. There are a number of tabs, obviously, and each tab contains rows each row being a data point. Now, if you add up the total number of data points across all of these topics, the total comes to around 1,100 or 1,200. It's something in that order of magnitude. Now, this is what a lot of people are saying. I sound like Donald Trump. A lot of people are saying this is what a lot of commentators and particularly politicians are referring to when they talk about there are too many data points. There are 1,200 or so data points in the standard. That sounds like a lot of things that have to be reported. But it is simply not the case that they all have to be reported. We'll come to that in a minute. The first thing to note is that not all data points are alike. We cannot simply say, for example, that reducing 25% of the data points will reduce 25% of the reporting burden. So if anyone is using this kind of proportion or the number's too high, reduce the number, you will reduce the proportion of, of the burden um, proportionately, then I think they're making the wrong argument. And we can come up with some very easy examples here. So this is the climate 
topic, there are many uh, data points. There are 220 or so in the climate topic. And we can zoom in on some individual ones here where the data point is relatively complicated to, to get the information for and has a large burden. So here in the climate change topic, I'm going to talk about two specific metrics. The first one I'm going to talk about is in row 117 in the version that I have here, and that is E1611 data point number, and it's paragraph 51 to E16. That's the referencing for you. Now, the, the data point itself is the, go, is the gross scope three greenhouse gas emissions. It's the scope three emissions total for this company. Collecting all of the information and doing the calculations necessary to calculate scope three emissions for a company can take many months. It can be a short exercise. It depends on the size of the company, their activities and the methodology adopted. But it can take many, many months to calculate gross scope three greenhouse gas emissions. Similarly, it can take many months to get scope two emissions Scope 1 emissions. There's scope 2 and 1 tend to be generally considered easier. But So let's focus on scope 3. That one metric there can require months and months of work. There is another metric here, though, 107, another data point, which is the gross scope 1, 2, and 3, and presented in a table. Now, that is a separate data point here in this list. However, that data point is just three other data points added together. So the time taken to collect that data point is one one thousandth of the time taken to get this data point. So I think that's all the proof I need to demonstrate that one cannot simply just cut the number of data points that are being requested. One is still going to have to go through every single data point to work out is there a disproportionate amount of effort required to gather this data point versus what the Commission is trying to achieve or versus what the EU itself is trying to achieve by having this information made available. Unless someone is prepared to do that exercise, you're going to be slashing data points and getting no gain from it. This is a lot of work someone has to do here to work out which of these look like disproportionate effort. So I'm not going to stick with the um, second argument, much, or the first argument much longer. One last thing, and that is many of the data points, for example, are voluntary or conditional anyway. They are only reported on the condition of something else occurring, and some are voluntary. So many of these clearly don't need to be reported unless certain conditions are met, and many are voluntary. And this is flagged in this data point sheet. All people need to do is open up the sheet, start removing all the potential conditional ones, get rid of the voluntary ones, and you start reducing the number quite a lot. And here's some more information, which may help decision makers. Many of these are narratives. So here we have a series of disclosures which are narratives. And this first one says a disclosure of the definitions of medium and long term. Disclosure of the reasons for applying different definitions. So this is really the same information. Here are my definitions. I did not apply others. Or here are my definitions, and this is why I applied them. You wouldn't necessarily go out and research and separately conduct some kind of workflows in order to gather this information. It's the same information that you would have to gather and you report it in a narrative. It's the same narrative. A couple of paragraphs would simply suffice to cover this off. It's highly likely that these, these other values here are similar. And there are some very explicit cases, in particularly in the narrative data points, where it is clear that the next data point simply follows from the previous. It's just further elaboration. And I actually think that EFRAG, and the people who drafted the standard kind of shot themselves a little bit in the foot when they produced this data points sheet. Because other standards don't necessarily do this. And it actually artificially makes it look like there are more tasks to be done than there really are. The list of data points is not the list of tasks. Right, enough said about kind of this disproportionate problem between data points and the fact that many of, the, many of them are in fact the same piece of information and that just because a data point is gone doesn't mean a task is gone. 
So that's the first argument I want to make. The second argument is far more fundamental, though, and that is the argument based on double materiality. Now we're looking at the standard. So anyone who knows about double materiality, anyone that has done double materiality, the argument here is that if you want to reduce the scope, simply do a robust materiality assessment. It will reduce the scope. It's almost impossible for every company to have to report, or it is impossible, it's impossible for every company to have to report every data point. It's almost impossible that any one company will have to report every data point. There may be some companies for whom every single sustainability matter is material, but I seriously doubt it. So here is the fundamental process that is right at the start of the ESRS reporting, and that is double materiality. And I get the strong feeling that no one in the commission even knows this process exists. It says this in the standard, the undertaking shall report on sustainability matters, based on double materiality principle. What you have to report is determined by this process called double materiality. So what is this process and how does it scope the report? Once again, the answer to our little problem is actually right in the standard itself, which the commission does not appear to have read. And it says that the information prescribed within a disclosure requirement, including its data points, or an entity-specific disclosure, shall be disclosed when the undertaking assesses, as part of its assessment, that the information is relevant from one or two of these perspectives. That's it. Subject to double materiality, if the undertaking determines that the information is relevant, then it is reported. That's it. It's so simple in black and white. If the data point is not relevant to a material outcome after the assessment, it's not reported. Now, we also have guidance already which tells us which information specifically is likely to be relevant when any one issue is material. So EFRAG's already done the mapping. The mapping document is called ID177, and it says if this thing is material after your assessment, then this disclosure requirement is likely to be relevant. You still have to exercise judgment to kind of prove it either way, but that's it. You can scope down the sustainability reporting standard if you do double materiality, and you have to do double materiality. So the idea that 1,200 data points will be reported by all of these companies is simply false. And it is simply a failure to understand what the commission has already implemented. So I'm not surprised that politicians have no idea what's going on. But I am kind of weary that they have spent all of these years and all of this time and all of our taxpayers' money implementing something that they seem to not understand. Happy hunting, everybody.